It's time for the 10 commandments of the keto diet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down what I think are the 10 just most important cardinal things to remember when you're doing a keto diet. Keep these in mind because if you could write down 10 very important things to remember about the keto diet as you go through your keto journey, this is gonna be it. So we're gonna break it all down. I'm gonna give you the details. We're gonna have some fun with it. And then to send you on your merry way to either enhance your current keto lifestyle or get started on a keto journey to where you can feel amazing and look your best. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Also wanna make sure you go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then go ahead and hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live or post a brand new video. I don't ever want you to miss out. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right in. So I'm gonna debunk a lot of things, but I'm also gonna give you some new science on a lot of things. The first commandment, thou shall not rely on MCT oil. Look it, I love MCT as much as the next guy. MCT oil is everywhere. We see MCT oil powder, we see straight MCT oil, we see C8, C10, C12, all these different kinds, and we get ourselves just all worked up about which MCT to use. The thing I want you to remember is that MCT oil should only be used here and there. Okay, MCT is not the highest quality fat in the world. You see, MCT is great because it gets converted into ketones faster, but that doesn't necessarily do much for you. The ketogenic diet is not all about getting as many ketones as you can, or not all about getting as much fat as you possibly can. It's very, very important that you treat fats the same way that you would treat carbohydrates as far as fast absorbing and slow absorbing. MCT oil absorbs very, very fast, which means it has a place. But you also need fats that digest really slow. We're talking about healthy saturated fats, or we're talking about longer chain fats like coconut oil, or we're talking about the healthy fats that come from different nuts like macadamia nuts and walnuts. Okay? So very, very important that you don't lean super heavily on MCT oil because that's like leaning on sugar in the world of carbohydrates. You have sugar, which is high glycemic and absorbs fast, and then you have healthy starches that absorb slow. You want a little mix of both, right? Same thing applies with the fats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, that was the first commandment. We're gonna go through, we're gonna go all the way to 10. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the next commandment. Yeah, I'm just eating goat cheese because that's what you do. But my reason in saying this is believe it or not, this goat cheese may very well turn into carbohydrates once it's in my body. Yeah, something you probably didn't know about keto. Which basically leads to the second commandment, which is do not hate on carbs. Okay, that does not mean that you should be consuming them when you're on a ketogenic diet. You should not be actively pursuing carbohydrates, but you need to know that carbohydrates are going to be created within your body. So the people that talk about the keto diet being this total anti-carb movement and where they just say that all carbs are bad and that your body doesn't need carbs, they're wrong. Your body does need carbs, but your body creates carbs from other substrates, okay? So it'll take little bits of protein from the cheese that I just ate, and it will, in some wraparound ways, create glucose from that. It will create carbohydrates from that. It's a process known as gluconeogenesis, and it's a perfectly healthy, natural process. Our brain generally runs on glucose. Only a small percentage of it actually runs on fats when we're in keto. So we actually need the carbohydrates. It's just how our body creates them is a different story. So we don't wanna be consuming a bunch of carbohydrates because we don't want to get there. But what I want you to do is not worry about it. Don't worry about carbohydrates being created in your body and understand that your body is going to use them for other needs, right? Your brain needs glucose, so it's going to create glucose somehow. Your muscles create energy from glucose, so it's going to do that somehow. Just because you are in ketosis doesn't mean that your body isn't utilizing carbs. So the reason behind this commandment is to actually save you a bunch of headache and heartache. You don't need to go through life thinking that carbs are bad. Your body needs carbs, they're perfectly fine. We're just not actively pursuing them with the diet. That's gonna bring us in to number three, our third commandment. So let's go and check that one out. The third commandment, focus on getting your omega-3s versus your omega-6s. And I'm not trying to sound like a broken record. Omega-6s are gonna be the thing that you're gonna end up naturally getting a lot of. You see, all the fats that we're gonna be consuming, like from grain-fed meat, or from a lot of the cheeses that are coming from grain-fed cows and things like that, we are by default getting a lot of omega-6s. Now I'm gonna explain everything. 
but we're not getting enough in the way of omega-3s, meaning we're not eating a lot of good old-fashioned wild-caught salmon. We're not eating good quality wild-caught fish. We're not eating good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat. This is very, very important, okay? So we put these aside for a second and explain some science. All right, omega-6s are very inflammatory within our bodies. And what a lot of times will happen is as people start on a ketogenic journey, 30, 60 days in, they start feeling a little bit cruddy. They feel really good when they start and then they start just kind of going down this path and they just don't feel as good anymore. I call it the keto wall and it has that name simply because it feels like a wall. Everything's been going great and then boom, now the reason this is happening is simply because usually you're consuming way too much in the way of omega-6s and it's so easy to just accidentally have it happen. You see, omega-6s trigger pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now in our bodies, omega-6s and omega-3 fats compete for the same part of a cell. So omega-3s help a cell become more fluid. They make a cell be able to communicate with each other. Our cells need to be able to talk. They need to be able to communicate with one another. And omega-3s increase what's called cell fluidity and they improve that cell membrane permeability and flexibility. So things can actually get into the cell. The cell can talk. Omega-6s, for lack of a better way of saying it, are more rigid. They're more ugly and they compete for the same place on a cell. So when we have a lot of omega-6s coming in, we end up with a cell that doesn't move around a lot and doesn't communicate well. It's like just a salty, cold old man that's hanging out at the bar and doesn't want to talk to anybody, just doesn't budge, right? Compared to like a gregarious person that's actually getting things moving in life. Honestly, weird example, but it's true. We don't want our cells to be the crusty old man sitting at Denny's, okay? We want our cells to be just gregarious, happy things that are making communication and causing our body to thrive. Now, the way that we combat this, again, is we make sure that we're either taking good quality fish oil supplements or we're consuming a good amount of grass-fed, grass-finished meat we're consuming high quality organic meat that doesn't have a bunch of the byproducts from soy and grain. Because trust me, it does make a difference. You can get by with consuming half as much protein in a high quality form in terms of absorbability and everything that gets utilized in your body than you could if you were using low quality stuff. It's so easy with keto to consume too much in the way of omega-6s. As soon as we start eating these fats, we're becoming more susceptible to high amounts of negative omega-6s. So make the positive shift to do whatever you can to add omega-3s into your diet. And one extra thing that you should note, studies have now shown that omega-3s do not store as fat as easy. So if you were to take two ribeye steaks, one that was just not high in omega-3s and one that was, the one that's higher in omega-3s is going to have less of an impact when it comes down to your waistline than the other one, benefiting the cell, whereas the fats from the other things are actually going a little bit more towards storage. So you definitely wanna to lean towards omega-3s whenever possible. And that's exactly why it made my list as my third commandment. So now let's move on to the fourth commandment. All right, now when it comes down to working out or anything in general, previously you used to just only have electrolytes when you were working out, right? The old school Gatorade stuff used to be all about just getting your electrolytes in when you're sweating or when you're losing water. Well, my fourth commandment for keto is all about keeping your minerals in all the time. Lots of sodium, lots of potassium, lots of magnesium, but most importantly, sodium. Here's why. When you go on a ketogenic diet, your insulin levels get really low. Now, I'm not gonna go into exquisite detail about insulin, we don't need to, but the simple thing is that when our insulin levels are low, it tells the kidneys to expel extra water. It's just a simple chain reaction. Lower insulin equals kidneys ditching more water. When we ditch water, we lose minerals along with it. So that means we're losing our sodium, we're losing our potassium, magnesium, and a bunch of other minerals. But again, sodium is what allows us to hold on to the healthy intra and extracellular water that we need for our bodies to perform. So we need to make sure that we're replenishing sodium all the time, especially if we're working out. But honestly, I add a little bit of salt to almost all of my drinks nowadays. So if I'm sipping on water throughout the course of the day, I'll add a teaspoon or two of salt into my jug of water. It's that simple. I want to have minerals elevated all the time. One of the reasons that people start losing performance with their workouts when they're on a ketogenic diet isn't because they don't have carbohydrates. It's because their electrolytes are out of whack and their brain isn't able to send that electrical signal down through the nerves to where it needs to actually go. So it's like my brain can't send a signal to my bicep so I can't do a proper bicep curl or I lose strength. It's that simple. So the fourth commandment is really easy. Add salt whenever you can in a high quality form. Trust me, you'll feel better. 
And I don't need to go anywhere to talk about this next commandment. My fifth commandment is all about not relying on a ketone level all the time. See? So the fifth commandment is simple. Thou shall not rely on ketone levels. Ketone levels are great. They tell us when we're in keto. They tell us a lot about what we're eating. They tell us a lot about what we're doing. But what they don't do is tell us what's going on in their insides that we can't really explain. Here's the interesting thing. When we go into keto, our body is doing lots of different things. And our body has the ability to regulate when we use ketones and when we don't, all depending on factors that are far out of our control and far out of our scope. We don't even know what's happening at a cellular level half the time within our bodies. Here's what's interesting. In between meals, we have something known as glucagon that releases. And this glucagon ends up stunting a process of something known as malonyl coenzyme A. So in between meals, our ketone production will generally go up, right? But when we eat, we blunt glucagon. Now I know this is complex, but hear me out. When we eat, we're stopping glucagon, which means that we are no longer prohibiting the malonyl coenzyme A from doing its job. So when we're driving up this malonyl coenzyme A, we're effectively inhibiting what is called carnitine acyltransferase from doing its job. All that means is that when we're eating, ketone levels will typically go down because we're not able to actually let the fats in to do the job. It's a long chain reaction. And my point in saying this is that if we're digesting, if we're consuming different foods with different calorie counts, with different fat levels, different protein levels, our ketone levels are gonna jump all over the place. Now, that makes it really hard to rely on ketone levels. But once you know your numbers, it's one thing. But if you're just getting started on keto, you don't wanna be dependent on that. You don't wanna rely on that. But you do wanna make sure that if you are testing, you're using a blood meter. So part of this fifth commandment is don't rely on the urine strips. <laughs> the urine strips are going to give you a false reading. Okay? They're going to give you a reading that is based on the excess amount of ketones. The urine strips measure your excess ketones, not what your body's actually using. The blood meters are much more accurate. But even then, we have to take it with a grain of salt, no pun intended. Okay, one last thing you have to remember is that your ketone levels are gonna be all wonky when you're working out. Okay, we have something called peripheral insulin resistance. When we're working out, our cells sort of turn off to certain compounds. They just don't absorb certain things. I'm oversimplifying this, but that's kind of the way it is. Basically what's going on is this peripheral insulin resistance makes it so our glucose can go higher and sometimes our ketones go lower. So you could be deep in ketosis and then do a hard workout and magically be out of ketosis. But it doesn't mean that you're not in ketosis. It just means you're not at that point in time registering ketones. So I just don't want you to overthink it. It's still important, but don't let it be the end all be all or you will drive yourself mad. Now we're gonna head into my office because I wanna talk about something that's pretty serious. So let's roll. Too much protein, ruining your keto lifestyle and making it so that you're not in ketosis anymore. All right, it's time to give you some facts. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually did a video on this topic already. So the sixth commandment of keto is knowing that protein is not going to kick you out of ketosis. Excess protein is not going to kick you out of ketosis. Now, this is something I've talked about. I've had to fall on the sword before. I used to think, based on older research, that protein could, by default, convert into sugar, because it does, and therefore kick you out of keto. But it's not that simple. You see, what's interesting is that protein only converts into an actual carbohydrate when it needs to. It's demand-driven. So what that means is gluconeogenesis, which is the process of protein turning into carbohydrates, is demand-driven. The body will only convert protein into carbs if it needs carbs at that specific time. So let me give you an example. All of a sudden you start breaking into a sprint and you are demanding carbohydrates because of how fast your body is moving. Then and only then will your body decide to take the excess protein that you consumed and turn it into glucose to fuel said activity. Same kind of thing with your brain. So the point is, it's not supply driven. You don't just build up stores upon stores upon stores of glucose coming from protein. It's not that simple. It's demand driven. So the body only uses it when it needs it. This is a great thing because it means that you can have more protein than we previously thought when you're on a ketogenic diet. And another thing that's really cool is when you look at how protein is metabolized and how it gets converted into carbohydrates, when it does happen, it's a metabolically expensive process that actually leaves you at a net calorie deficit, in a net calorie deficit rather. So what happens is you consume this protein, 
and the protein has to get converted to carbs because the body said so. So it gets converted into the carbohydrates, but the process alone of converting the protein into carbohydrates actually is a net loss of overall energy. It costs you more energy to create that carbohydrate from protein than that carbohydrate actually gives your body. So it's definitely not something we wanna be worried about. Enjoy your protein, enjoy your steak. Don't go overboard, because sure, of course, too much of anything is a bad thing. And of course, too much of it can lead to fat storage. But you don't need to be sitting there worried about if a little bit of that extra steak is going to kick you out of keto. One thing's for sure, it's not gonna kick you out of keto. Will it make you gain weight if you eat too much of it? Yeah, that could definitely happen. So there you have it, that's commandment number six. Thou shall not be afraid of protein. Now, let's hit the road while we talk about commandment number seven, because it's one that a lot of people end up messing up on. And if you can remember this commandment, you can save yourself a lot of heartache. All right, so I gotta run a quick errand, so we're gonna hit the road for a second. This next one that I wanna talk about has to do with living a real life while you are following a ketogenic diet. Everyone wishes that they could follow a keto diet and just have that be their focus, right? But of course, life happens. We actually have to have a real life. So when you're out running errands or when you have client dinners to go to or you have meetings to go to, you cannot always just be able to eat whatever you want. It's so difficult. So sometimes it's better to just be prepared. I can't tell you how many times I have been driving down the freeway and I realize, crud, I didn't eat anything. I didn't follow my diet. I didn't eat anything. I'm essentially fasting when I'm not trying to fast. So this next commandment is to be prepared. Always have something with you that is ketogenic so that you don't fall victim to these other things. So I like to have macadamia nuts on hand. I'll have almond butter packets on hand. Sometimes I'll have a protein shake on hand, anything like that, because that way I end up having something that I can at least curb my cravings with so that I don't run into the nearest fast food joint and grab something I'm not supposed to. Plus, it also makes it so that when I get to where I'm going, I don't make poor choices. Like if I'm going to a client dinner and I consume maybe some macadamia nuts or maybe a little bit of almond butter, something like that, it makes it so that I'm not starving when I go and sit down at dinner. So I'm better, uh, I'm better equipped to make good decisions. And trust me, it makes a big difference. And when you are on the road, it really makes a big difference to have something that can actually be a meal replacement. So this is where Ample comes in handy. So these guys are awesome. So Ample has put together a ketogenic meal shake. So we're talking, a quick 400 calories. And I know that sounds like a lot of calories, but if you're talking about a meal replacement, something that's giving you the full spectrum of everything that you need, then this is gonna be perfect. So the cool thing about Ample is they put it together. They've got the fats, they've got the protein, they've even got the micronutrients and the greens in there, and they've got the right kinds of fibers, which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. So essentially we've got whey, if you wanna go with whey protein, we've got egg, if you wanna go that route, we've got pea protein, if you don't even wanna use a dairy formula at all. But then also the fats that they use, they're using saturated fat from coconut oil in a powder form. Then they're using MCT oil, but they're also using macadamia nut oil powder, which is really cool stuff. And then they're using acacia fiber and chicory root fiber. So you're getting really good quality forms of soluble and insoluble fiber that are gonna make it so you're full. And so you're also activating specific pathways like cholecystokinin within, within your body that are gonna make it so you're not hungry. So it's a perfect meal replacement. So when I'm on the road, I can do something like this. Add a little bit of my water, try not to make a mess here. Look at that. Shake it up, I've got a shake. Done and done. So for those of you that are watching, there's a special link down below in the description if you wanna check them out. Again, you don't have to use Ample. I'm just saying it's nice to be prepared. You can use macadamia nuts, whatever, but if you want something that's full spectrum and actually has some greens in it too, you definitely wanna check them out. So special discount for anyone that wants to take advantage of them down in the description below. So the premise of this commandment is to simply be prepared and be ahead of everything else. I keep things in my center console. I keep things in my glove box. And I'm always keeping things with me, even in my backpack, no matter where I'm going, just so that I don't fall victim to the wrong kinds of foods. Ample just happens to be something that tastes good and gives me everything that I need if I'm on the go. So again, check them out. So now we need to get serious for a second, okay? Because I did something bad and there's some people following me and I'm thinking, oh shoot, here it comes. 
Ah, man. I'm, I'm running. I'm evading this one. This commandment is all about evading the keto police. So let's get out of here. Okay, so the keto police. Okay, shoot, I think I lost them already. <laughs> Sweet. Which actually is the next commandment, evading the keto police. What do I mean by that? We've all met those people. The people that want to tell us how we're doing keto wrong or we're doing whatever diet we're doing wrong and that we should do it their way because they saw some video on the internet or they saw some article and that we're doing it wrong. I call those people the keto police because they will tell you that every single carbohydrate is going to kick you out of keto. They're going to make you feel bad about things and it's really a moral thing. This commandment is about keeping your sanity, keeping your integrity and keeping who you are really there because you don't want to fall victim to this. You don't want people to be telling you how you should run your life and do keto. Sure, there's commandments. Sure, I teach you things. But the reality is that keto can be done a lot of different ways. And the keto police are going to make it so that you cannot ever consume a carbohydrate. Or once you go keto, you can't look back. Okay? And I'll explain a couple commandments down the line here how the ketogenic diet actually lends itself very well to people that want to phase in and out of it. Personally, I do keto for extended periods of time and then I come off of it for a little while and then I go back on. The keto police will not have that. They're all about you are keto and it's that way or the highway and no other way. Let me tell you this from someone that has lost 100 pounds and someone that has used the ketogenic diet to not only lose a bunch of weight but also get my life back on track, have a successful business, have a happy family, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want to say. You do not have to be keto all the time. Use keto as a tool in your toolbox and use it as something that can help you have specific metabolic and mental advantages. And if you ever feel like you need to come off for a little while and enjoy some carbohydrates because mentally you need it, do it. Just don't do it super frequently, okay? So that's how you evade the keto police. And as you saw earlier, they're pretty easy to evade. So let's go ahead and head back. I kind of have to use the restroom and I'll share with you the next commandment. Well, while we're there. All right, just kidding. Now the ninth commandment, there is some relevance here. The ninth commandment is all about fiber. Okay, lots of confusion surrounding fiber on a ketogenic diet. Fiber technically is a carbohydrate. By definition, it is a carbon, a hydrogen, and an oxygen, CHO, carbohydrate. So does it count or does it not count? Well, we have to look at the big picture. There are multiple kinds of fibers, right? And we have to look at how they affect the body. So we have insoluble fiber and we have soluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is the regular kind of stereotypical type of fiber. It's the fibrous roughage that acts just as that. Roughage helps push things on through our intestinal tract so that we can go to the bathroom, right? Well, the thing is, is that's still a carbohydrate in a way, although it doesn't affect your blood sugar. So there's argument as to whether it will affect your ketone levels. But what we do have to understand is that there's not always a direct correlation between our blood glucose and our ketone levels. So just because our glucose levels go up a little higher doesn't necessarily constitute a rise in our ketone levels. So this is where there's a lot of mystery science out there. One thing that I can say for sure though, is if we are questioning fiber in any way, because we just don't know, there's something that we should pay attention to. Soluble fiber gives us more of an effect with less potential risk. So hear me out on this. Insoluble fiber does not attract water. Insoluble fiber is just regular fiber. Again, you can look up all sources of insoluble fiber, but it's usually like the main kinds of uh, starches and the basic fibers that don't digest. Okay, so what that means is if we consume 10 grams of fiber, we have 10 grams of roughage. Plain and simple. 10 grams in, 10 grams out. With soluble fiber, soluble fiber holds water. It draws water in. So with soluble fiber, one gram of soluble fiber can draw in 10 grams of water and make a 10 gram glob of fiber, of roughage. So we can have 10 essential units of risk with fiber coming from an insoluble form, or we can have one unit of risk with insoluble fiber because 
we consume less insoluble fiber to have the same digestive effect. So what I suggest on a keto diet is try to get your fibers from soluble fiber whenever possible, okay? That's where I talk about things like chicory root or I talk about acacia fiber or I talk about some of the sugar alcohols. Again, you could do a simple Google search. I don't wanna you know, spend this video referencing all sources of fiber, but soluble fiber is going to be your friend. Here's the interesting thing that we don't always know. If we consume fiber, it does ferment in our gut. And when it ferments in our gut over time, it can still turn into a sugar if it's in our gut long enough. So this is a pure hypothesis, but my thought is that if we consume fiber and it stays in our gut too long, it can eventually become a disaccharide. It can eventually break down into the sugar molecules that fiber is supposed to break down into. So therefore, it could affect our ketone levels. So here's what I recommend you do. Count each gram of fiber as a half a gram. And it's just going to save you a lot of heartache again. It just makes life easy. So if you're counting out your calories, you're counting out your macros, you're counting out your carbs and fiber, instead of completely subtracting fiber from the equation, like they say to with net carbs, subtract half the amount. So if you have something that has 10 grams of carbs in it and five grams are from fiber, I want you to count half of the grams of fiber as carbs. So effectively two and a half grams. So therefore you're at seven and a half grams of total carbs for that meal because you're counting half of the fiber towards your carb content. I just feel like that's a safe way to do things since we don't really know entirely what fiber can do to our ketone levels. And quite honestly, studies are showing that fiber is not the end all be all. We don't just need fiber to go to the bathroom. It's more about gut bacteria and more about a lot of different processes all the way down to the enzymatic, hormonal, and peptide level. So there you have it when it comes down to fiber. I know it might be a little bit too much gory detail, but hey, we all go, right? All right, let's wrap it on up with the 10th commandment. All right, and lastly, the 10th commandment, okay, the big one. This is the fact that you need to stay committed for at least six to eight weeks. Why is this? Well, it has to do with something called fat adaptation. Something interesting happens after six or eight weeks. What happens is the mitochondria, which is the portion of your cell that's responsible for creating energy, suddenly becomes adapted. It's called fat adaptation. The ketogenic diet is great, but what we're really after with the ketogenic diet is shifting the paradigm in which our bodies use fuel. It's not all about just staying keto all the time and you know, pounding fat bombs and drinking MCT oil. It's about conditioning the cells to know how to use fat. By and large, as a world, we consume way too much in the way of refined starch and just carbs in general. Not saying that carbs are bad again, but we consume too much of them. So our cells become dependent on that. They get used to that. So they almost become resistant to the fats in a way. The ketogenic diet makes it so your cells can use the fats better. Now studies have shown that it generally takes between six and eight weeks for the mitochondria to develop the machinery to where it can accept fats. The membrane actually changes a little bit within the cell. So there's an inner membrane and an outer membrane within the mitochondria. For fats to be able to readily be absorbed, they need to be accepting of it. They need to have the right amount of uh, carnitine transferase, they need to have the right amount of different enzymes that allow things in, okay? So we have to stick with it for six to eight weeks. After this six to eight week period, our body will preferentially use fat over carbohydrates, which means that even if you come out of the ketogenic state for a little bit, you're going to end up back in it a lot faster. If you don't stick with it for six or eight weeks, fairly strict, you're not going to get that benefit. So if you wanna be able to enjoy a carbohydrate now and then, you wanna be able to just maybe fall off the wagon for one meal now and then, the first thing you have to do is commit for six weeks. The other reason I want you to do that is because I know that after six or eight weeks, your body is gonna fall into balance. And at that point, you're gonna understand why the ketogenic diet is all the rage right now. It's not just because it's a fad, it's because there's true cellular metabolic effects that change who we are for a very positive turn. Now, I appreciate you all watching this video and I appreciate you taking the time to learn what I think are the 10 commandments, to learn what I think are the most important things to really have success with the keto diet, but most of all, not lose your mind in the process not getting lost in all the gobbledygook out there on the internet that's making you confused. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.